Hey everyone, Tim here again from timscomputerfix.net. Hey, I own a computer repair shop here in the Savannah, Georgia area. So if you are in that area and you are in need of any type of computer repair, I'm your guy. Look me up. Hey, even if you're not in Savannah, you can go to timscomputerfix.net and there you can contact me and I will give you instructions on how you can send your laptop to me. I will repair it and I will ship it right back to you with all affordable prices. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to access and replace and remove both the power jack and the SSD hard drive on the Lenovo X1 Carbon. Let's talk a little bit about the specs and the history of the Carbon. The X1 was released in early August of 2012. And its base model had 4 gigabytes of memory. It had a Core i5 processor and 128 gigabyte SSD. And their most expensive model had a Core i7 and 256 gigabyte SSD. That SSD drives are actually uh, MSATA connectors interface. So it's MSATA SSDs. Show you here in a minute how to access that. Right, so my customer brought in two identical X1 carbons. One is his and one is his wife's. Uh, he basically has an issue with power jack on one of them. It's not powering on. But uh, he also, you know, just wants for now for me to swap the hard drive so he can just pick up where he left off. So we're going to swap hard drives on this while I work on the power jack. That way he can tap, take one home to work with and I can leave the other one here in the shop. But we're going to start off by just removing the screws on all the sides and corners of, of the X1. There are seven screws all together. The battery for this Ultrabook is on, on the inside underneath this cover. So once we get this cover off, it's very important that the very first thing we want to do is to disconnect that battery. We want all power sources disconnected from the main board of this computer. So once we have all of the screws undone, we're going to flip the Ultrabook over. We're going to kind of open it up kind of flat and we're going to work a flat tool. I'm using a spudger here to kind of work our way around and, and un, unsnap the little clips that it has. And you can take your time with this. It's not really that difficult, but you know, you don't want to, you'll, you don't want to be forceful. And just kind of get it to where you can work your fingers in and, and unsnap it. It's not too difficult. It kind of pops right up. Nice and easy. Work your spudger around. You don't really have to use much of any force just to get those clips unsnapped. And you see here we've got it unsnapped. So we're just gonna just gonna fold back our 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 palm rest here. And you can kind of have a little look on the side here because there are ribbon cables that are plugged in. So we want to be really careful. Kind of check out how much play you have in it. But once you flip it over, you'll be able to see the, the ribbon cable and also just be really careful with that. So if this is your first time opening one of these up, it is just a good idea to have a look to make sure you know how much slack you have on that ribbon cable there. But here sideways is kind of a safe way to do it. You can really have a closer look at what you got. You can see that ribbon cable there in the back. And you see how much room you have there to kind of flip that up. Either way you want to do it, that's just how I did it. Just to be on the safe side. But once you've done this a few times, then you'll know exactly. You can just flip that right on up and know exactly how much play you're going to have. Here this shows you uh, your power jack and this is where it's located. And this is kind of a, a rectangle shaped power jack that Lenovo is using but you can see here where it connects to the main board. But again I do have to stress before we even get started doing anything else we need to disconnect the battery. So here I show where the battery cable is located. All we have to do is pull this wire off and disconnect it. Now we know for sure that there's no power flowing through the board. There's one screw here that's a little metal cover that covers the power jack. We're going to take that screw off and then we can take that little cover off. No problem. Protective cover there. That comes right off. 
And that's going to expose the jack where you can really kind of just lift up on it and it kind of comes out of its slot there that it's in. It's also got a little PCB that's connected to it. But here, there's a ribbon cable that needs to be disconnected from the board that the power jack cable runs under. So we disconnect that. And here's a better view of the power jack. Like I say, there's a little PCB board that's attached to it. And that is actually your light. That's the light that shows on the outside of the near your power jack that shows you're getting power. So we'll just carefully lift our uh, cable out of its out of its trace there and be sure we're not taking anything else with it. It's taped down a bit at that one point. So just remove the tape and then we'll be able to unhook the power jack from the main board. Just, just be sure to remember how everything goes back into place. Take photos if you need to. Take your time. It's not a very difficult job to do here to, re to change out this power jack. Here we can just unplug it from the board. And from this point, we are pretty much just ready to replace it with the other jack. We have our new jack in hand. We just do everything in reverse. Plug it into the board. And just kind of make sure we work that cable in back underneath that one ribbon cable and get it all back into place and we put the ribbon cable back snap it into place pretty much as simple as that nothing difficult pretty easy job there we'll put our cover back on the power jack tighten the screw down for that yep and that's pretty much how the power jack gets replaced. Now here on this side, you'll notice is our MSATA SSD. So there's one cable we have to unplug to remove it. And that's right here. Just move it out of the way. And there's one screw we have to remove. And then our SSD can be removed and swapped out with the other SSD, however way we need to do it. Just as easy as that. Hey, now that, now that we're done removing components and everything, let's be sure to remember to plug our battery back in. That's pretty important. And now we can kind of fold back our palm rest into place. After we take one last look to be sure everything is secure, fold back our palm rest, snap it into place. Be sure everything is seated right. And then we can close the close up the ultrabook flip it over and now we can proceed to put all of our screws back in so like i say this is a relatively easy repair lenovo makes it really easy to gain access into the insides of these carbons but uh if you are uncomfortable doing this repair feel free to uh to send it to me you can find me at timscomputerfix.net and you can contact me through my website. But we can just test the, test the computer out here now. And as we can see, it fires right up. It's looking good. Test out, make sure everything works on the computer before we call the customer and have them come pick it up. So great. I hope this helps somebody figure out how to repair your X1 Carbon. I do appreciate everybody for watching. Please rate and subscribe to my feed. I would really appreciate it. You can find me at timscomputerfix.net. Again, everyone, thank you very much. And until next time, see you soon.